in AD 2101. Instant Replay Live was beginning. Were we now? Yeah. <laughs> Did we get signal? Main screen turned on. That's true. The main screen is definitely turned on. Oh, okay. Now um, I remember this level. I was like, maggot flood level. I remember this being frustrating, yeah, but... I gave Joe a little warning, but I guess he didn't quite remember. Okay. Um, I was going to say that, you know, somebody set up us the maggots. But... <laughs> <laughs> so... All right. So, <clears throat> coming into this recording today, I was like, we're going to record. I'm going to be ready. Oh, I thought of a really good joke. And I, like, somewhere between going away from my desk into the bathroom and back must have, like, dropped the joke in the toilet because I cannot remember it for the life of me. It is so annoying. I, I have, you, have you had these experiences in your note-taking? Um, I just, I completely, like, my notes were put away in my laptop bag. And I, I was like, oh, I'll just get it out after I've peed. <laughs> and then it was gone. <laughs> um, my, I mean, what, my biggest thing is that I don't have my notebook on me when I'm out working or whatever. And yeah. I'm just like, oh, I've got all these thoughts while I'm doing brainless work. Yeah. Oh, they're all gone. Yeah, it's so, like, the sea infuriating. Of them. Yeah. So I challenged myself as a result of that. To, to come up with the best worst joke I could. Like, the worst joke that still technically functions as a joke. Mm -hmm. So here it is. Nate Russ walks into a bar. They say, we don't serve your kind here. He says, why not? I'm the fun guy. Tonight! <laughs> Nate Russ is the guy who's the lead singer of the band Fun. <laughs> It's the worst joke I Ugh, can come up with. That is pretty bad. I, I'm impressed. <laughs> I, I was, worked hard. I didn't know who Nate Russ was. I was like, okay. I know. I knew you kind wouldn't. Of pun with his name yeah, or something. I knew uh, you wouldn't. <laughs> that's pretty bad. Um, I was very proud of myself. Reminds me of my bad joke. That is my one original joke that I can claim. Oh yeah. Which is I, I've told you. Oh but, yeah, uh, I think you have. It's, okay. Uh, what did the What did the Jello say to the flan? <laughs> You're off-putting. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You've told me before. That's very right. Very proud of it. Yeah. Um, it's one of those that I've gotten a lot of yeah. ugh, from yeah. friends. Yeah, oh, it's terrible. <laughs> but mine is. Yeah. You know, equally or worse. <laughs> so, yeah, it's bad. I think I think yours is is, is spectacularly worse because it's like it you, requires you a very specific to setup. Have, exactly. Rest, like what? Exactly. Then, yeah. I mean, it's it's also like it's it's a it's a phony like punch to the joke, much like mine is. But mine doesn't have that ridiculous start. So. Yeah, yeah. Unless you don't know what flan is, I guess that's actually probably. <laughs> yeah, that's true. There is some specific knowledge required for that as well. We need like a pop up right now. That's you know like one of those informative like <laughs> Alton Brown like what is Flan? <laughs> you know, and some some weird like segue music. Yeah. Do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> so it got me thinking when I made up that <laughs> terrible joke <laughs> about the the best worst joke I heard before that, okay. and um, and and I don't even know if I want to tell it. Because it is the kind of thing that when you tell someone, they hate you forever. And tell that's, it. well, that's all fine for like telling one person. But when you're telling everyone who watches the show, <laughs> like this could be our last episode, Joe. <laughs> this could I'm, be it. Now I'm more curious. I feel like we, you've built it up now that you so much that you have to tell it. We, we could post this joke and everyone in the comments will just be like, they need to die. <laughs> Kill them, <laughs> end the show, it'll be over. All right. The joke is titled "The Green Ping Pong Ball." Ugh, I so, don't like the start of it already. Don't worry, you'll hate it by the end. <laughs> you don't have to like it yet because you'll be way beyond that before it's over. So there's this child, and he is the richest child you can imagine. Okay. Okay. He has wealth beyond measure. His parents are super conglomerate industrialist me mega billionaires and his birthday is coming up and they say son what can we get for you he's a very young child what can we get you for your birthday what is the thing your heart most desires what is your most cherished want in this life because we can provide it we guarantee you and he says all I want is a green ping pong ball so they kind of look at each other and think, well, children are stupid. <laughs> and they, they walk away. Um, 
his birthday comes around, and it is the biggest spectacular event you can imagine. You know, a kid is extremely, exceptionally, rarely lucky if they will get, like, a moon bounce at their birthday party at this age. Okay. This kid had an entire amusement park built in his backyard just for him. This kid had major, major celebrities dressed up as his favorite cartoon characters walking around and entertaining the crowd. He got everything, every toy on the line that you could possibly hope for. You know, the best uh, Guardians of the Galaxy and Avengers stuff, everything. Speaking of Guardians of the Galaxy, oh, look at Wow, that's a heck mug. of a mic bump. <laughs> Just rock the table, Joe. Yeah, that was... Um, Ow, oh, my fingers. Also, you did a visual joke with no <laughs> no reference point. Uh, yeah, we need to type in, like, slash All right. show mug or something. Let's, let's take a break from my joke so you can um, you can explain your mug story. Oh, I've got a mug. It's got Guardians of the Galaxy on it. It's not actually mine. A, a co-worker left it at work one day, and then they quit, and I, then I took it. That's that's how the kind of person Joe is. Well, I mean, they weren't coming back for <laughs> it. it Alright, so getting on with my story. So this kid does not get, among all of these wonderful, great things, he does not get a green ping pong ball. And he's depressed. He goes into his room, he hides away, plays the super theater-sized video game that they got him, and passes the time until Christmas comes around a few months later. And his parents come to him and they say, Son, you can have anything you want, anything in the world. What would you like for Christmas? And he looks up at them with big eyes and he says, I'd like a green ping pong ball. And they say, all right. And they walk away. And Christmas Day comes and he's unwrapping his presents and they have bought him a private island with actual reindeer populating it and a um, year-round Santa Claus for him to go and sit on the lap and ask for anything he wants and literally anything this kid could possibly hope for for Christmas. The best... Christmas ever, except no green ping pong ball. So this time he's really depressed. And he goes back to his room on his private island, and he closes the door, leaving the reindeer and Santa Claus out in the cold alone. And he sits in his room, lamenting his green ping pong ball and that he wants so bad but can't get because his parents won't listen to him. And then he starts to get very ill. His parents love him dearly and they, they care, so they get him the best medical care they can. They fly in the world's best specialists in every field to try to take care of him. And he's just getting sicker and sicker and he will not get better. And finally the doctors tell them they don't think he's going to make it. And on his, his deathbed they come to him and they say, Son, what can we do for you? What is the one thing that you want that will make you better? And he says, I just want a green ping pong ball. So they go, they run to the store, they buy every green ping pong ball they can, they run back. They finally have gotten him the one thing his heart desires. They come to him at his bedside and they say, here it is, here it is. And his eyes fill with life again. It has been so long since they've seen real joy from their son. And they say, God, you've made us so happy. Just tell us, please, why a green ping pong ball? And he raises his weak finger and he says, because. And then he dies. <laughs> that's, that's, that's not. <laughs> I'm upset. <laughs> I don't. There's no explanation. That, that, that's that where we're at. Like, I've been like. Struggling to follow along and play this game at the same time. <laughs> and this is the payoff I get. What did I tell you leading into this joke? That how how many minutes was that? Uh, just about ten minutes worth of joke. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my goodness! Yeah, that is well. It's that been is... A, it's been fun instant replay live. Oh all our god. friends and family out there. All We've right. had a good run. <laughs> While we're on the, the subject of jokes, though. Well, we're going to wrap it up now. I know, so. I know. But, but okay. this... Uh, have you watched The Killing Joke on Monty Python? On Oh, no. Uh-uh. It, it was one of the best sketches. This, um... <laughs> an inventor... Or a comedian invented 
the funniest joke in the world, and it uh, just murdered people it, outright because they well, couldn't stop. Well, it was stop. so funny that they that it killed them, right? They laughed yeah. to death. Yeah. And so his wife dies after Ooh. finding his corpse and reading the joke. And, oh, uh, Joe, uh, you were so close. That would have been the perfect ending. I know. Uh, and then, so they're, they're, all these people are dying reading the joke, and they end up militarizing it, and they end World War II with the joke. Oh, nice. And it's just, oh, man, it's just a sketch uh, that starts off so mundane and then just spirals out of control in classic Python it. faction. I'll have to catch it. So there's another version of that joke to give you one more run here. Well, one more now. Um, called The Secret of the Purple Rose, and I will tell the, the super truncated version. Um... Kid is walking home from school, meets a homeless man, and the homeless man, giggling and laughing, says, Hey, hey kid, you ever heard the secret of the purple rose? And he has no idea what this homeless man is talking about. So he goes home and he tells his mother, and his mother slaps him in the face and says, Wait till your father gets home. <laughs> and his father comes home and he says, Dad, just what's the secret of the purple rose? And his dad slaps him in the face and tells him that he can't ask questions like that. And then he goes to school and he asks the teacher, what's the secret of the Purple Rose? And she slaps him in the face. And this is the re ongoing, recurring story of this child's life. Until one day, when he's finally a, a full-grown adult and he's nearly forgotten all about the secret of the Purple Rose, but it, but it spent so much of his life up to that point eating away at him, he sees that same homeless man across the street. And he calls out to him and waves his hand and says, Sir, sir, you have to tell me, what's the secret of the Purple Rose? And the old homeless man looks up and smiles with his toothless grin and walks out into the street to tell him and gets hit by a bus. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching Instant Replay Live, everybody. Come back for more terrible jokes. Really kick it. Kick Yo. it! Plans, free stroke, Sonic Golf. Sonic Golf.